Welcome to Orange Coast Unitarian Universalist Church. My name is Joel Ivanez, and I am your worship associate today. I am joined by Beth Syverson, our Director of Music Ministries, in welcoming you this morning. Our minister, Sean, Reverend Sean Wilshire, is not leading the service today, but she does have a special message for you. Good morning, everyone. So uh, earlier this week, I was talking with a uh, friend and colleague of mine and telling her that I wasn't going to be in the pulpit this Sunday. And she said, oh, who is? And I said, oh, it's Reverend Tom Owen Toll. And she said, the Reverend Tom Owen Toll. And I said, yes, it's the Reverend Tom Owen Toll. Because if you didn't know, before you is a living legend. Uh, Tom is amazing. He's been around for, well, let's just say a very long time. And he's incredibly respected and loved in this denomination. He's written so many books about what it means to be human and to search for that holiness inside. He is an absolute master and we are so blessed to have him in the area with us and and to be here today. So enjoy this uh, time with the Reverend Tom Owen Toll. We would also like to recognize the many volunteers that have helped to put this service together today. In addition, this morning, as Reverend Sean stated, we are delighted to have Reverend Tom Owen Toll, who, has, who was ordained in 1967 and is currently preaching hither and yon throughout the Pacific Southwest region. Tom is always honored to be returning to the pulpit of our Orange Coast Unitarian Universalist congregation. He conducts workshops on conscious aging and mindful dying and is the author of two dozen books on spiritual fulfillment and social justice, some of which he will be available to sign after the service for those who wish to purchase. We also respectfully recognize that our church property rests on Ahachimin and Tongva land. As Unitarian Universalists, we have many different beliefs but we are one loving community. We are bound together, not by a common set of rules or beliefs, but rather a covenant. A covenant is simply a promise, a promise that whatever our beliefs, we accept one another and encourage each other in spiritual growth. We affirm that all life has inherent value and that all existence is interconnected we strive for justice and compassion in our deeds and relationships, and we are committed to creating and welcoming, a welcoming community without regard to the traits that sometimes divide people. To our Roomers, we invite you to silence your cell phones. For our Zoomers, we invite you to say hello in the chat. I want to extend a special welcome to visitors. If you are seeking a spiritual home, we hope that you will find it here. Later in the service, we will have an opportunity for you to introduce yourselves if you'd like to do so. Okay, now let our worship begin with the lighting of our chalice. As we say, love is the spirit of this church and service is its law to dwell together in peace to seek truth in love, and to help one another. This we affirm together. Good morning, everyone. Uh, as we prepare for Thanksgiving next week, we thought we would sing uh, this song, beloved song, We Give Thanks. Please rise and body your spirit, and we'll sing it together. Oh, we give thanks. For this precious day, for all gathered here, and that's far away, for this time we share with love and care. Oh, we give thanks for this precious day. Just stay. 
words for our call to worship come from the Reverend Barbara Peskin, and let us share them in unison. For the beauty of the earth, the spinning blue-green ball, yes, Gaia, mother of everything, we walk gently across your back to come together again in this place to remember how we can live, to remember who we are, to create how we will be. Gaia, our home, the lap in which we live, welcome us. Gotta keep walking in. So somebody got an idea, and then they go talking it. We show up to make it real, and then we go building the path of love, and then we gotta keep walking it. Gotta keep walking in. Who knows where to go? Just keep on the winding path. Which road do you suppose? It's the path of love, just keep on walking, riding, loving and fighting, keep on working, praying, living and dying. The heart of the thing I'm trying to say is the beating pulse of every day. It's the song I sing and the prayer I pray, it'll lead my path all along the way. It's a Somebody might fall down and we go to pick them up Because we're holding the lost and found Everybody building the path of love Now we gotta keep walking it Gotta keep walking it The road just might get long But we keep on walking home because the hold of a hand is strong Everybody building the path of love And then we gotta keep walking it Gotta keep walking it Who knows where to go Just keep on the winding path Which road do you suppose Is the path of love Just keep on walking Riding Loving and fighting Keep on working, praying, living and dying. The heart of the thing I'm trying to say is the beating pulse of every day. Is the song I sing and the prayer I pray. It'll lead my path all along the way. It's a man. It's a man.
gotta keep walking it. And now we gotta keep walking it. Gotta keep walking it. And now we gotta keep walking it. Okay, now I would like to share our story for Time for All Ages with the following video. So, let's be real. Some days are hard. So I made this. List of awesome things I'm thankful for. Yeah. Sometimes I need reminding that things are not all that bad. So I wanted to share a few because you guys are my friends. It's great to be alive. And here's some reminders why. First one, bubble wrap. When cats do their tongue, like this. I'm also thankful for the little paw pads that the cats and dogs have and the sound it makes. Paw pads. I love them. Hey, turn that back on. Oh, no, 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 no. Change it, change it. Ah, there, that's better. Music is magical. We can make anything better. Right music can make a video better. The same goes with life. Singing. I like paw pads. I like paw pads. Singing. If something's boring, just sing it, and that will make it better. Watching paint dry. It's really cool. Old people who still hold hands. Clouds that look like stuff. One time I saw a cloud that looked like an airplane, and I realized it was an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> Imagination. Without it, we wouldn't have airplanes, no internet, pants, pants. Pants, we gotta wear them, because if we didn't, it'd be sort of awkward. Pants. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. <laughs> Three. Clothes with funny names, like Windbreaker. <laughs> Birthday cake. No reason at all, cake. Just cake. Sorry, if we filmed this while I was hungry. Forgiveness. I'm Kim Preston, but I ain't perfect. Ain't, ain't no word. We all mess up, come on. Don't mess up and forget to forgive all the mess ups. Thankful plants undergo photosynthesis, using the energy from the sun to convert carbon dioxide to oxygen, providing us with the air we need to do things like this. I'm bored. <laughs> Morgan Freeman's voice. Hello, I'm Morgan Freeman. I'm working on it. My voice is changing, but it hasn't changed that much. Food, doggo, burger. <laughs> I know, I know, I already said food, but this is my list and my rules. Happiness. Sadness. Sad isn't bad. It helps you know what you care about. People. Sometimes people can be really people, but we need each other. Life's better with people in it. Family, friends, you. Just being alive. Sometimes we forget how it's just great to be alive. We're breathing. Some days are tough, but we got a lot to be thankful for. We just have to look for it sometimes. They say if you have food in your fridge, clothes on your back, and a place to sleep, you're richer than 75% of the world. I did not know that. So what would you add to the list? Let me know. Share this video with someone you're really thankful for. Oh, and of course, also this. Dancing! <laughs> Brad and I are thankful for all of you. Seriously, thanks for giving us and the whole world a reason to dance. So what are you thankful for? Let me know. KP out. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, we'd like to invite uh, one of our religious education volunteers, Gabrielle, up to light the children's chalice as we sing, as we sing them out. Let us join together in some words of prayer.
prayer and then silent communion. O spirit of life and love and liberation, our prayer is simple. We need thy companionship and support. We can't do life alone. Bring comfort to those who are suffering strife and warfare, bigotry, illness. But also challenge us uh, when we get apathetic and bored and need to be challenged to be our better angels. Comfort us and challenge us. And let there be <clears throat> daily peace and unrest in our lives, sufficient peace to bring us calm and to center us, but enough unrest to keep us morally awake and spiritually on our toes. Peace and unrest, unrest and peace. Now let us join together in some moments of silent communion. Shalom, Salam, Ashe, Namaste, Blessed Be, and amen. <clears throat> the responsive reading that I've selected was composed by the former president of the UUA, O. Eugene Pickett, dear friend of ours, as well. And Gene died in the, during the COVID time. And we will read it responsively. For the expanding grandeur of creation, worlds known and unknown, galaxies beyond galaxies, filling us with awe and challenging our imaginations. Amen. For this fragile planet Earth, its times and tides, its sunsets and seasons. Amen. For the joy of human life, its wonders and surprises, its hopes, and achievements. For our human community, our common past and future hope, our oneness transcending all separation, our capacity to work for peace and justice in the midst of hostility and oppression. For high hopes and noble causes, for faith without fanaticism, for understanding of views not shared. For all who have labored and suffered for a fairer world, who have lived so that others might live in dignity and freedom. We give thanks to the for human liberty and sacred rights, for opportunities to change and grow, to affirm and choose.
Um, I was almost one of you uh, about two weeks ago when Sean persuaded me to be here in person. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, those are very, very kind words uh, from Sean. And Joel, what a joy to meet you and to work with you and the whole team back there, many of whom I know and in the choir and, and Beth. I always take home some of the songs. Uh, I sing in nursing homes and I sing on my own in my family. Uh, but they're always songs that you have here. And she is a very special creative gift in your presence. Thank you very much. I, I mean, I could go on. I mean, Paul and Clover, it's a deep joy to be here with you. And Bertie, we go way back. Judy Tomlinson, we go way back to. And the Lockeries, I mean, they've been here, what, into the last century and the other century, yeah. <laughs> I mean, a long time, <clears throat> Tom and Nancy. And uh, Steve and Barbara Morrill, they've always been very inviting to me and gracious. I, I'm probably leaving somebody out, and I apologize. <clears throat> but we go way back. I mean, I go back, uh, Diana Heath, Jim Nelson, way back. And, um, you know, I was driving up here uh, today, and I was thinking from San Diego, what are some of the primary virtues <clears throat> that I had put in my top five? No particular order, but there'd be love. There'd be joy. There'd be humility. There'd be serenity. And there'd be gratitude. And you know, I look over and I see Phyllis Kaplan in the choir here, a long time member of our congregation in San Diego, and she moved up here to be near her family. And usually when someone moves like that, we may work out a trade, so, you know. <laughs> a, a few of you will be coming to San Diego on a trade. I know, I know, I see some hands going up there. <clears throat> so, it's a great, I mean, I, I confess, I'm thankful for a lot of what's happened in the last two days in our country. And, but I'm not going to talk about that. That's another theme. <clears throat> That's another theme for another day of how we can be a good country. Not a perfect, not a great one. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in our being good. And we need to keep on that purpose. And Thanksgiving ain't here yet, but it's one of the top five as far as I'm concerned. We're lucky to be here in the first place. And it's one of our greatest American holidays because it honors not military prowess, but spiritual freedom. It celebrates kinship with the earth rather than victory over a human foe. It simply is more spiritual than patriotic. In a pogo episode, Churchy Lefemme, remember Churchy Lefemme, sits wailing in the back of the rowboat after seeing a newspaper headline, sun will burn out in three billion years, killing all life. Maybe earlier than that now. Churchy cries, woe is me, I'm too young to die. Then Porky reprimands him, shut up. You're lucky to be here in the first place. And so we are lucky to be here in the first place. You know the mathematical odds of our having been born are incredible. Something like one in 700 trillion. No two snowflakes are alike. No two humans are the same either. Even identical twins differ. It's truly a marvel that each one of us, irrepeatables, walks the earth at this very moment in time. <clears throat> in Cat's Cradle, a fanciful science fiction novel, Kurt Vonnegut, whose family, by the way, were founding pillars of our Indianapolis Unitarian Congregation. Vonnegut conveys the same attitude through the Bokanist death ritual. The Bokanist, you see, serve God while 
by lying down on the floor, raising their legs, and massaging each other's feet, soul to soul, while communing with God. When one of the old Bokanists is about to die, she recites the prayer, God made mud. I was some of the mud that got to suit up and look around. What memories for mud to have. I loved everything I saw. Lucky me. Lucky mud. If we're bold enough, and I think it requires immense bravery to incarnate any of the five virtues I mentioned earlier, to wear this attitude of gratitude all the way until our death, then like the Bokanists, when the time comes to release our consciousness back to the greater planetary pool, we can shout, how blessed I was to live. Lucky me. Lucky mud. Now, none of us asked to be born. There's no special merit involved with our arrivals. And never forget, we didn't earn the privilege of life. We were lucky. And whether we look at existence scientifically or religiously or both, it's an unspeakable miracle. It's a wonder. It's a gift of grace. And every morning I get up, <clears throat> try to take a deep breath, I go to the bathroom, come back and shout forth in a room next to the room I share with my wife. She's still sleeping. It's good to be alive. I'm lucky to be here. And I'm taking nothing for granted in the next 24 hours. I'm going full bore today. Well, to be honest, in my 82nd year, I don't always spring out of bed. <laughs> As I said, I crawl or stumble out, go straight away to the bathroom. And, but nonetheless, thankful for the gift of yet another unearned day. As long as you and I are awake, as long as we're breathing, we can love and be loved. We can love and be loved. Let me tell you the story of how gratitude and I first joined forces. <clears throat> it was a clumsy start. My parents were worried that about me as a toddler because I didn't seem willing or able to muster detectable words until about five or so. Fortunately, I was suffering from no psychophysical malaise of any consequence. I was just extraordinarily withdrawn. Perhaps like the biblical Mary, I was pondering things in my heart. Who knows? Yet once I started to talk, I emerged in sentences, they say. And look at me now, words are my trade. When I was about five or six, my mom would put by the bed stand a little notebook, and I was starting to read and write and with a pencil or pen and, and invited me to put down in that notepad whatever was on my heart before I went to bed or when I got up. When I first started to talk, I remember my mom, Mother Mary, pulling me aside and saying, Tommy, we're not quite sure how many words you're going to be able to produce in the days ahead. So before you get going, I have a few tips to offer you. Son, there exist words that heal and words that hurt. And I want you to major in the first kind, the healing ones. Secondly, there are five phrases, sweetheart, special to me, 
that I hope will be liberally sprinkled throughout the course of your own life. They aren't complicated or fancy. They don't belong to scholars or gurus or ministers. They belong to every one of us. They're words, son, that mend, that soothe, that give life. So I pass them on, she said, to you for your safe keeping and caring use. And whenever you're not sure what to say, either be quiet or offer one of the following simple phrases. Thank you. I love you. How are you? I'm sorry. Tell me more. Mom went on. <clears throat> she said, now, of course, there are going to be times, inappropriate times to use any of those words. But almost universally, Tommy, these five phrases express gratitude and respect and love the most important freight any language can ever carry. And I want you to carry it. But of all five phrases that mom passed on to me, her clear favorite was thank you, which she quickly added came with two conditions. I mean, first, if you never share your gratitude, son, it won't reach its destination. And you and I, we live in, in a world where it, it, it's often not delivered, isn't it? Thank you. Plus, she said, if you don't offer thanks precisely when you feel it, you're not going to get around to doing it later. The moment will pass. So gratitude is ground floor, Tommy. It's life's spiritual engine, and all the big virtues are motored by gratitude. Everything of worth flows from a thankful heart. That was the main mini lecture of my growing up. And I've spent the rest of my years trying to live up to it. Falling short, to be sure. And so my spiritual kin here at Orange Coast, while it's sitting full on my heart, I want to thank you for inviting me back into your midst. You don't know, you don't know when that's not going to happen. There's going to come a time when I look in the mirror and I say, yeah, you've had it. It's okay. Or Carolyn, my wife, will tell me, you've had it, don't go out and road again. <laughs> <clears throat> and that's okay. That time will come. And I'll connect in other ways. The truth is that human gratitude is a mature human emotion. It's not easy to come by. I mean, just revisit the real story of Thanksgiving, which, by the way, is worth doing whether you're, when you aren't bloated with food and relatives. That's the time to really focus on Thanksgiving story. Because it's filled with mixed motives like our lives. Mixed results. We tend to romanticize our holy days. We idealize the setting, the characters, the virtues of the first Thanksgiving because we're feared of sullying our American image. I understand that. But on the contrary, I'm learning to find that, that I'm more inspired when acknowledging that the pilgrims were roughly as brave and beastly as humans of most eras. They resemble you and me. Take a good look at them. They were a motley <clears throat> handful of families who defied all good sense in seeking to settle a wilderness in winter and to plant seeds of democracy in a new world. The pilgrims came to build 
a way of life and community that would furnish, as John Winthrop said, a light to the nations. Yet it was tougher than anyone could have imagined. In that first winter at Plymouth, over half of them, half of them died of starvation and exposure, including many children. They had to wonder whether the trek was really worth it after such difficulties and devastation. Yet William Bradford wrote in his simple journal, they knew they were pilgrims and they summoned answerable courages. What a marvelous phrasing of the central response to life. They knew they were pilgrims and they summoned answerable courages. We too are pilgrims. Even if most of our journeys require not passage across actual oceans, but the spanning of interior or relational gulfs and divisions that flood our land today. In these 21st century times of hardship, uncertainty, and bigotry, and falsehood, and oppression, you and I were constantly pressed into summoning answerable courages for the living of our days. Answerable means possible, not some dreamlike mantra. Answerable, it denotes responsibility, the ability to respond. It refers to the fact that the pilgrims simply did what they had to do to survive the winter and settle the new land. Now, I pay close attention to that kind of courage because it's basically the same kind you and I are asked as Unitarian Universalists to summon for our daily adventures as free-thinking mystics with hands starting this afternoon. I mean, have you gazed recently at some of the forgotten twists and turns of the original Thanksgiving story? The first notable irony is that the pilgrims came to America not really because of gratitude, they came out of ingratitude. They were dissatisfied with the conditions of life in their homeland. They were gravely discontented. And discontent marks the human spirit breaking out of the prison houses of the past. It's the human spirit doing what the spirit was made for, bursting forth with new and unfettered energy. So let's never underestimate the role of ingratitude in our lives and the role of ingratitude for human change. If the pilgrims had only been a lot of thankful sentimentalists, they would have never left home in the first place. Three cheers for discontent, for dissent, even disgust. For without these motivators, Transformation rarely occurs. Let's face it, we stay stuck. Here's another piece of Thanksgiving ambiguity. The pilgrims intended a new start in the moral history of the world. Yet their intentions were both noble and ignoble, just like you and I. They pursued religious freedom, all right, but they came to America to worship in their own way and to make other people do the same. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, I'm glad they landed here. I'm pleased that their land has become my land. And my land will become the land of others in the centuries ahead, hopefully. But that same landing <coughs> Well, the pilgrims also marked stealing territory from Native Americans, the destruction of their religion and way of life, centuries of agony and poverty and loss and death for the natives already dwelling here, which we honor in our services as Unitarian Universalists. So our gladness on this day must always be tempered 
when you take a bite of the turkey or the tofu, tempered by a disturbing sadness. A while back, I read about a classroom of children, it was about this time of the year, who were assigned to write an essay about Thanksgiving. Now, it was different than most classrooms in America, however, in that the school stood on a reservation. And all of the children were members of the Chippewa tribe, a tribe found in Minnesota and Wisconsin and Michigan. And the assignment for the theme was written on the blackboard. Can you guess what it was? The words, why we're all happy the pilgrims landed. <laughs> Write your essay. Internalized depression is a subtle, profoundly insidious, rea insidious reality, isn't it? Friends, not only was the winter hard and harsh for our early immigrants, but their entering this land was hard and harsh, devastating upon the native peoples. There's a cartoon showing the pilgrims landing in this country, and it reads, at long last an end to our religious persecution. Now where are those rotten heathen Indians? The first Thanksgiving was a tainted one. But it's not too much different today. Our celebrations are just as checkered. Their days fill with food and famine, family and loneliness, compassion and bigotry, greed and gratitude, all in ample measure, sometimes intermingled under the same roof. Years back, <clears throat> we went to have Thanksgiving. Our, our daughter and son-in-law at the time live in the Santa Barbara region. This was probably about 10, 15 years ago. And we're in San Diego. <clears throat> and our daughter said she invited my former wife and her new mate in other words, in-laws and outlaws, everybody was invited. <laughs> and she said, either everybody is welcome at the table, this table, today, or we're not having the party. What boldness that our daughter embodied. I'm sure you've experienced something like that someplace sometime in your life, and often around Thanksgiving or the holidays. Somebody that isn't there that maybe should be there or might be there to bridge some irreconcilable hurts and difficulties. Twisted and tormented as our lives may be personally and interpersonally and nationally and globally, we can dare to shape lives of thanksgiving. As a life-affirming religion, Unitarian Universalism claims that in spite of our brokenness, in spite of our cowardice, we still possessed glimmers of the capacity to demonstrate thankfulness for our lives and to share the bounty of earth with fellow travelers. As medieval German mystic Meister Eckhart put it, if the only prayer you say your entire life is thank you, that would be enough. That would be enough. For in the final analysis, Thanksgiving isn't really a holiday or even a season. It isn't a fair or foul weather response. It's a way of being. It's a way of being in the universe moment by moment a way of starting the day, a way of ending the day, a way of living all the moments in between. And you know what? <clears throat> Gratitude can actually be improved with practice. That Nepalese body prayer that opens my day. Thank you, God, for the phrase from E.E. E. Cummins. Thank you, God, for most this amazing day. The day just tastes better after it launches with 
with that kind of blessing and summons and aspiration. And around 2 o'clock in the afternoon, after my nap, I got to recharge the battery and say that prayer again. Thank you, God, for most of this amazing day. And I'm not done with it yet. And once we stop taking things for granted, our own body becomes one of the most surprising things of all. Never ceases to amaze me that my body both produces and destroys 15 million red blood cells every second. 15 million. That's nearly twice the census figure for New York City. And if the blood vessels in my body lined up end to end, they would reach around the world. Yet my heart needs only one minute to pump my blood through this filigree network and back again. And it's been doing so minute by minute, day by day for the past 81 and a half years and still keeps pumping away at 100,000 heartbeats every 24 hours. This is a matter of life and death for me and for you. Even though I have no idea how it works. I'm brimming with curiosity and surprise and gratitude. Thank you, body. Thank you. Oh, the marvels that life delivers, huh? The marvels that we humans can neither fathom nor earn. Marvels we can only soak in, being still and wordless and grateful. Remember Job's prayerful words? The Lord giveth. And the Lord taketh away, blessed be the name of the Lord. Now there is a spirit of perpetual thankfulness. A sentiment that brings us back to the pilgrims. Everybody always assumes they were thankful for having survived. Seems to me they were able to survive because they were thankful. They were able to survive because they were thankful. You and I are able to survive and endure and live robustly because we're thankful. Why should they have given thanks? After so much grief and loss and death? And why give thanks after a hard winter's endurance by dint of their own human effort? If anything, they probably should have held a Gathering of shared commiseration for what they had been through and mutual self-congratulation for what they had accomplished. That would have been more logical. But gratitude isn't about logic. It's about being the better angel of your being from start of the day to the finish. They were thankful because they believed that survival isn't possible and life isn't really livable without being grateful. Through living our thankfulness, moment by moment, we claim our true humanity, a reason for being here on earth. And we bless the creation from whence we came and to which we will ultimately return. That's what genuine religion is all about. And so whether arguing or rejoicing, the thankful person remains thankful. Whether celebrating beauty or protesting injustice, the thankful person remains thankful. Whether laughing or crying, fearful or in pain, the thankful person remains thankful. It isn't a passing state or an annual feast. It's a perpetual condition of the mature religious pilgrim. We're lucky to be here in the first place. Lucky me. Lucky you. Lucky mud.
Unitarian Universalist congregations are fully self-supporting, meaning that members and friends raise all funds for the operating budget, ministries, and programs of the church. We are ever, great, ever grateful for your gifts of time, treasure, and talent. OCUUC amplifies that spirit of generosity by sharing one half of the plate we receive with an organization that shares our values. This month, we are supporting Stand Up for Kids, which is a nonprofit organization dedicated to caring for homeless and at risk youth by transitioning them from crisis to connection through housing support, mentoring, drop in centers, and street outreach. There are multiple ways in which you can support the church and this organization. You can mail a check, you can go through our website, or you can use an app called Vanco Mobile. The choice is yours. All the information is on our website should you need it. And as always, thank you for your generosity. to my hometown funny how this all looks different but it feels the same like how life never stops changing but some things never change so fill your plate and fill your drink and fill this house with family the kind of love that all these years can't wash away cause the older that I get I see the life is short and Thank God for this Thanksgiving Day. Watching football, watching family grow at the old kids' table. All have kids of their own. Starting to see my grandfather in my nephew's eyes. Mom still can't talk about him and not always cry. So fill your plate and fill your drink and fill this house with family. The kind of love a thousand miles can't wash away. Cause the older that I get, I see the life is short and bittersweet. Thank God for this Thanksgiving Day.
And now let's sing our song together that we always sing after our offering. This song puts our intentions into words and expresses our gratitude for the many gifts we share. We gather together, we gather as one for peace, love, and justice for everyone. We give from our hearts to show that we can. We can change lives with what we share. Okay, now is a time when we honor the important events of our lives. You are all invited, one and all, whether you are a member, a friend, or a visitor, uh, to participate in our weekly ritual of joys and sorrows. So, let's take a deep breath. Perhaps you come here today holding something close to your heart, moments from the last days or hours that have struck you at your core. If you'd like to honor such a profound joy or sorrow, you are invited to do so. If you are a rumor, you are invited to come forward to light your candle. If you would like to share your joy or sorrow, you can write it out on the slip of paper that was provided and hand it to me. If you're a Zoomer, you're invited to write your joys and sorrows in the chat. Once the rumors are done lighting candles, I will read all the joys and sorrows shared out loud as Bertie Reed lights a candle for the Zoomers. As music is played, I invite you to silently offer healing or celebration as you feel called and according to your own beliefs. Okay, we'll go ahead and open up some of the joys and sorrows that we had from the chat. We do have a joy from, 
Emily Sherping, who is so grateful to be recovering well from complications of COVID-19 and finally be seeing my sister for the first time in more than three years today. Mm. Brandy shares a sorrow that his Aunt Nori has passed away. Please send healing thoughts to his cousins and their family. Uh, Matthew Patterson has a joy. Last night's auction was amazing and fun. Ah, yes. <laughs> he also has a concern to share. Uh, still dealing with financial struggles and trying to get a home-based job or maybe an office job not too far from home that won't interfere with school. Um, and Craig Preston has a candle, would like to light a candle of joy for freedom and safety to go door to door promoting pro-climate candidates. Mm. Yes. And Reverend Tom has, would like to light a candle of joy, reminding us to be grateful for everything good and bad. <laughs> ah, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Reverend Judy would like to light a candle of hope and healing. Her nephew, Michael Lehman, who is having, for his, her nephew, Michael Lehman, who is having major cancer surgery on Tuesday. Uh, a candle of, I'd also like to light a candle of joy for myself and Jolyn. Uh, we did have an amazing auction turnout last night. Uh, Thank you for everyone's, for the team and the volunteers and the turnout and generosity last night. Uh, another joy, Chance turns 15 on Tuesday, November 15th. <laughs> Seriously, 15, where do the years go? This is all Joe Lynn's language. Years filled with joy, having Chance in them. Mm. Uh, I have another candle of admiration for Simone Bentley, uh, her papa, whose birthday was the 22nd of November, 1908, and who, in who was a medic in World War II, was taken, uh, was taken, I'm sorry? Ah, okay. Ah, okay. Uh, to, par to, uh, Paris, to Austria, Austria. To Austria, Austria yeah. for nine months before you were born. And he died at 80 years old. Mm. <laughs> uh, do you have another candle of joy to light for Francie Coleman? Her grandson, Ryan Mayhew, celebrated his 23rd birthday on November 9th of this year. He graduated from Penn State this year and is working with his dad for the Washington Commanders. So happy for him and grateful. Mm. Another candle of joy from Sandy Martin. Uh, our granddaughter, Sabrina, is nine today. The floral ice cream soda was made in celebration of her birthday. Oh. <laughs> uh, yes, and the Kilcher family, a candle of joy and hope. There are no words to describe how grateful the Kilcher family is to this loving OCUUC community. Those of you out there who may be going through difficult times, please know that the OCUUC community is working tirelessly to support you, oftentimes behind the scene. 
Mm. Okay, let us hold in love all the joys and celebrations and all the hurts and sadness, both silent and spoken. Let our joys remind us to be thankful, our concerns remind us to hope, and our sorrows remind us to connect. Let all these moments remind us that we are not alone. Please join Bertie Reed in a spirit of prayer or meditation. And once again, as so often we heard from Jim Nelson when he occupied this pulpit, pulpit. I read from The Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. Love the earth and sun and the animals. Despise riches, give alms, alms to everyone that asks. Stand up for the stupid and the crazy. Devote your income and labor to others. Hate tyrants, are you not concerning God? Have patience and indulgence toward the people. Take off your hat to nothing known or unknown or to anyone or any number of people. Go freely with powerful, uneducated persons and with the young and with the mothers of families. Re-examine all you have been told in school or church or in any book and dismiss whatever insults your own great soul. And your very flesh shall be a great poem and have the richest fluency not only in its words, but in the silent lines of its lips and face, and between the lashes of your eyes, in every motion and joint of your body. Blessed be and amen. Okay, let us join together as we extinguish the flame of our chalice and say together, extinguish our chalice, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Okay. I'll go ahead and move forward. Thank you for joining us this morning. We are a congregation made up of people who all believe differently, and yet when we gather, we gather together, we make up one loving community. We need not think alike to love alike. If you are a guest, a visitor, or someone who has not yet, has not yet been known to us, I invite you to become a part of this beloved community. We encourage you to write in the chat your name and where you are from so that we can welcome you. If you'd like to know more about our church, including program, uh, programming for our youth and children, please contact us at hello at ocuuc.org, and we will help you to get connected. In addition, we invite you to sign up for our weekly email called The Blast at blast at ocuuc. We want everyone to feel part of this beloved community, so please reach out, and we will help you get connected. So first, just to go ahead and acknowledge, are there any newcomers in the room? Uh, and we will go ahead and bring a mic forward so that you can introduce yourself with your name and where you're from. No? Anyone online in the chat? Any newcomers? OK. All right, well then after the, after the benediction, we'll have a short period here where everyone can wave and say hello. And after that, you can choose to be put into a Zoom breakout rooms for about 20 minutes or so. We invite you to check in and get to know the people in your group and, where, and welcome any visitors. First, uh, first we have announcements though. First, uh, one announcement that uh, has not been uh, put in but definitely was mentioned earlier, 
thank you to all that volunteered and participated in a very successful Tis the Season Fall Auction yesterday. Uh, thanks to your generosity, OCUUC was able to reach bidding pledges totaling over $10,000 on donated items. So thank you. Woo! I'm going to clap on that. Uh, we do have some announcements here as well. Uh, OCUUC Writing Club will be meeting today at 11.45 here in the Victoria Room. Uh, we will be having the OWL classes uh, in Suite 7 starting at 1 o'clock. And also we will have tables set up outside here today for the upcoming Friendly Center Turkey Basket Drive along with the Interfaith, Interfaith Hearts and Hands Drive. Uh, we also have a, a list of uh, some of the other weekly meetings that are going to be going on this week. The Historical Jesus Class will be going on on Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Uh, we do have an anti-racism reading group tomorrow on Monday. Uh, moviegoers uh, on Wednesday are going to be seeing Armageddon. <laughs> uh, we have our, and then we have our normal choir rehearsal on Thursdays. Uh, Stitchwitz on Saturday, and the Reddit meditation group, a nonfiction book club as well. So please feel free to join us on these. And now I'll step away. Let us share in unison the benediction from Philippians, the fourth chapter in the Christian scriptures. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honorable, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. And let's sing our, our goodbye song together. Let our service continue.